Welcome to the Company of Women International presenting to you the Beauty from Ashes TV program. Rifles, Scudder, and I are just so involved, and we're going to involve you in this conversation. And it's just opening up so much that is just exciting to me that we can talk about uh, speaking God's Word and how we are spirits and have a triune nature. So, Rifle, let's take off on it again, okay? Well, we can go to 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 5. Uh, we'll start in verse 17. We'll read to the end of the chapter. This is another one of those parts of Scripture where people read and they don't understand or they say, how can this be? Because we weren't taught right. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. And that's the thing. The Word of God doesn't make sense many times, but it makes faith. That is, that's, a fa that's a powerful statement it right is. there. I'll say it again. The Word of God many times doesn't make sense, <clears throat> but it makes faith. So when we read Romans ten seventeen, faith cometh by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the Word. So don't read the Bible with your five physical senses. Read right. it with your spirit. When you read something in here, take it from your spirit. Because many, many times, if I think of one of our favorite chapters, Luke 6, 38. <laughs> Given it shall be given unto you. In the oh, world, yeah. what was I taught? You don't give anything. <laughs> you know, what you can, hold it, keep it, yeah. get what you can, can what you get and sit on it. Don't give it to anyone. <laughs> right. But now Jesus comes and he says, no, that's not the way it works. Give and it shall be given unto you. What do we have to do? Renew our mind and agree with the word. And that we thoroughly discussed. Yes. Renewing our mind. It is so important. So listen closely now. So in sec, uh, 2 Corinthians five seventeen, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, many people, when they've just got saved, the next day they look in the mirror. You may be combing your hair if you're blessed to have hair or whatever. <laughs> and you think to yourself, nothing is different. I look the same. Uh, if you were overweight before, you're still overweight now. If you uh, were skinny before, you were still skinny. It's not talking about the physical body. It's talking about the inner man, the spirit, which is the real <laughs> you. That has been recreated. So all the old death things that were lodged in the spirit, they are gone. No more. Old things have passed away. All things in your spirit, the real man, the inner man is new. And that's what it's talking about here. And we've spent our lives, however, whatever our age may be, accumulating all of this old teaching it is of the world and of man's thinking. It's not God's. And only God can get rid of that wrong thinking by his word. Just taking this word and being in agreement with it. Yes. <clears throat> Carrying on verse 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. What does it mean to be reconciled? God's not angry anymore. God's not holding anything against and us. And he never was angry with us. No. That was something he got angry in the Old Testament, yes. but that's not with, with Jesus. No. God is not angry with us yes. at all. That's why he sent Jesus to tell us that he's not angry, that he loves us. And, and Jesus was the one to exemplify how much God loves us. Hmm. Just... I'll put this in here. A lot of people, as you say, God was angry in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And people are trying to live in this era of grace, this dispensation of the New Testament. Right. But trying to explain it by the Old Testament. Can do it. And the Bible clearly, Jesus in the Gospels, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I haven't come to do my will. I do the will of the Father. The word says that in the days previous gone by, God has spoken to us through the prophets, yes. Hebrews 1. 
But in these last days, he has spoken through his son. son. And what did Jesus say to the lady caught in adultery? <coughs> what did Jesus say to the lady at the well? What did Jesus say to Zacharias? He didn't condemn any of these none, people. He none. brought non-condemnation, the gift of forgiveness. That's right. Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still brings to us that gift of mm -hmm. no condemnation. This is what John the Baptist came saying. Repent. Yes. Repent. Yes. And what better word could we have for this nation at this time? And I don't care who you are, what you're doing, or anything else. You start repenting now, and we will see a change in this nation. And it's because we'll see a change in ourselves. And the repentance is just to agree with what God says about us, what God says about himself, and not go by the old way. Repent literally means... <clears throat> turn around 180 degrees mm -hmm. and walk in the opposite direction. Right. So if you thought that God was angry, he's out to get you, repent oh, of that I did. mindset. Turn I, around I surely did. and walk towards a loving <laughs> Abba Father with his arms right. wide open. He was out with a stick. If you sinned, he was going to, you know, it's not that way anymore. Repent right. from that mindset. Come into agreement with what he says. Hence, we go back to the secret place and I will say of him, Mm -hmm. You are my refuge, my fortress, my right. Abba Father in whom I will trust. Amen. So, carrying on here. It says that mm -hmm. we have now been given the ministry of reconciliation. When you and I speak to other people, do we tell them about a loving God that has forgiven their sins? Or do we tell them about a God that is still judging by the law? And if you and do this, he'll them. cut your hands off or, you yeah. know. He'll uh, make you sick just to teach you something. Yeah. He wants you poor so that you can be humble. You'll That's learn by God. these things. Yes. It's not so. Yes. But Je let me tell you, one time I wondered. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jesus said, he says, who teaches us? The Holy Spirit. Back to John 16. Mm -hmm. When he has come, he will lead and guide you. He will teach you. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will teach us, not sickness and disease. Right. He will poverty. teach us all things. And it was he who taught me that I had such stinking thinking mm. and had sacred cows and nothing worked. <laughs> and I'm trying to, to find God. And, I'm, and I knew he was a loving God. And I, I wanted a relationship with him. And I was not having it. And... It's an awful life to live without that relationship with the Lord. It's so wonderful to have his, to know you're loved and to know he's yes, right with you all the time. Definitely. And the Holy Spirit is constantly with you. Yeah, well, he's in you. He can't be separated from I know, you. He's isn't that great? There. Wherever you go, he goes. Wherever you go, the kingdom goes. I'm telling Praise you. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. So Talking we have to you the all ministry the of reconciliation. <laughs> that is that God... This is God the Father was in Christ reconciling the world, sinners, people who didn't know him to himself. Listen to this. Not imputing their trespasses against them. Holding How nothing against me. many people are going around and say, this has happened because you did that. Right. Because of your sin, you lost your baby. Because of or, your sin, because you're not tithing, because you're not giving, because this is happening because, and the word clearly says God is not holding out trespasses against us. And the same thing is happening. They're trying to, so many are trying to say that this country is being judged because we didn't do this or the, so mm. forth, that is not so. Mm. That is not the judgment of God. Well, when God comes on the scene, his presence, that which is not joined with him and loving him, they are going to sense the disapproval. But when his people are there together, you're just welcoming this loving attention. But the two standing together, one is going to sense a judgment. But mm. God is not judging us. No, he placed all judgment on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there are many scriptures we can prove that with. So not holding the sins <coughs> against them, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Then he goes on to say, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 
And this verse 21 is just so powerful that if you think about this verse with a natural mind, it's just not going to work. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5:21. For he, God, made Jesus, who knew no sin, yeah. to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now you ask many, many Christians who have been cleared by the blood, they've made Jesus Lord and Savior of their life, and you ask them, are you going to heaven? Oh yes, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Does God love you? Oh yes, most <coughs> definitely. Are you the righteousness of God? Are you as righteous as Christ? Oh, how can that be? Yes. And this is what the word is saying. So now let's ask this question. Let's flip the table around. How could Jesus, without having committed one sin, mm -hmm. be crucified as a sinner? If that doesn't catch you, I don't know what will. Answer that question. How could a blameless, spotless Jesus, Son of God, Son of Man, without committing one sin, how could he die the death of a sinner? Which he did. Which he did. He did. He actually became sin. Exactly. How did he do and it? And he took he that took sin. took my sin. Mm -hmm. And he took your sin so that he's not holding whatever you have done against you. Absolutely. You don't have Absolutely. to feel guilty. It's paid for. But now we can say that just as he died a sinner, mm -hmm. without me doing anything righteous, right? I can now receive his righteousness. Right, because he transferred us out of that kingdom of darkness yes. and to the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. So this is talking about our spirit when it says that old things have passed away, all things have become new. And, and it people is are not brand taught new. That. It is, yes. And now when we renew our mind so that it <coughs> lines up with the spirit, now life works the way that it should because Romans 12, it continues to say, renew your mind so that you can prove, it goes on to say, the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. That's a nice place to be, proving the good, perfect will of God. Because if my mind is renewed, I can get my body to do what my mind wants it to do, which is what Jesus is telling me to do, and I'll be like him, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> So we're just talking about the love and I hear so many people come and they, you know, maybe after a service or just talking to someone, they'll come and they'll say, Pastor Rifle, I, I just want to feel God's love. I don't know that God loves me. And yes. if we turn to the book of 1 John chapter 4, it says in verse 9, In this the love of God was manifested toward us. So this is saying, the Bible is saying yeah, that, this is the love that God had towards us. Mm -hmm. This is how much he loves you, what he did. Mm -hmm. It says that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved yes. us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We never, ever, ever have the right to say, I don't feel like God loves me. But you hear this all the time. Frequently, frequently. We don't renew our mind. We don't see if you just take these two verses, go into the secret place of the Most High, mm -hmm. and sit down and say, Father, even while I was a sinner, even while I was not looking for your will, even while I was out hurting people, damaging others. In that state, you came and you loved me. Yes. And that's it. Now, he comes to us where yes. we are. Yes. We don't ever get to a point where we can go where he is or find him. He knows where we are. Yes. He, he's not lost. We mm. are. <laughs> yes. And people will say, you know, when you clean up your life, <clears throat> when you do you this, can't then clean you can't clean it up. You can't do that. I like the saying I've heard before, Jesus catches the fish before yes. he cleans it. Right. And you see, I was that fish. I was always trying to clean myself up so God would accept me. But that was putting the cart before the horse. Yes. So when he has become the Lord and Savior of our lives, mm -hmm. 
That's where we start. Many people think that's the end. Wow, now I'm going to heaven. No, that's this is where we begin. That's when we allow Him yes. to become our Lord and Savior. Yes. Because we say we accept you and we want you to come live within us. Yes. And isn't that the greatest thing? He comes to live within us. He's never gone. He's always present. The Spirit is right here as long as I have breath. The Holy Spirit is within me, and He's never leaving. Never leaving. And that's yeah. another a teaching or another thing that so many people are afraid of is that they can offend Him. Maybe the leave. Holy Spirit will go. Or maybe Romans eight it talks about those who walk according to the flesh. Well, I did something in the flesh. Now He's left right, me. Right. Right. No, no, no. That's not what it's saying. Mm -mm. And this is a lot of people still have that fear. Oh, yes, and that's what it is. It is a Guilt, fear. Guilt, condemnation, maybe. Because I did something wrong, <clears throat> even though that I'm a Christian, I should know better. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Now I've hurt God. Now he's angry with me now, and that's so far from the truth. I've even asked him, was he angry with me? <laughs> um, what haven't I done <laughs> that was not right? And I guess maybe he allowed me to walk that way just so that I could be in a position like this. Because I can tell other people, like, hey, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yes. And, and that even goes back right to the beginning. I can remember very, very clearly when I was at school and people told me in what we called R.I. class, religious instruction. Uh -huh. They would go back to the garden. <clears throat> they would tell the story of Adam and Eve. And looking back now, I can see that they did not know God. And it's not right. judging them and saying they're wicked. I'm just saying mm -hmm. the... Jesus says you'll know a tree by its fruit. Right, right. And they were telling me about this God, and they told me that when Adam and Eve sinned, God got angry. And God sent them out of the Garden of Eden, and he was so angry that he made sure they don't go back, and he put swords in the, in the cherubim's hand because God was cross. He said Keeping to Adam, you so you couldn't enter there again. Exactly. I've given you all this. Yes. I've asked you one thing, and still you disobey. I will show you get. And, and see, that is so far from the truth. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll prove I'm that to us now because I know some people are sitting there and God saying, tell me how it worked. Yeah, God was protecting Adam yes. and Eve by not allowing them to go back. And they, because, my goodness, to be in his presence after they have given everything he gave them away, he could kill them then. Exactly. And this, <laughs> the, uh, this is the reason why God put that angel with a sword there. It wasn't because he was angry was because of God's love. And I'll prove it to us now in Genesis 3, in verse 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and, and evil. evil. It was never God's intention for man to know evil. He never. didn't want us to have to go Not through that. Not at all, mm -mm. no. But he chose to do that. So now God says, and now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. In evil. Yes. And he protected us from getting into evil. He knew that Adam now knew he had done wrong. So if he could go back into the garden, he would now go to the right tree. He would fix his wrong. Mm. But he couldn't eat that tree in the state of his spirit being dead because yeah. then he would have stayed like that forever. And God ah. said, you've got to get out because I've got a better, I've got a, I'm, there's another chance. I'm going to yeah. make another <laughs> way for you. But mm. you can't eat of this tree now. So it wasn't because of anger. No. And that's how I grew up, because it makes perfect sense. Our oh, anger was what I always sensed. Yes. This is where the condemnation came yes. in. Because how many times <clears throat> when I did something wrong, was my father not angry? Mm -hmm. Or my teacher not angry. Right, right, And they right, said, right. because you did that, this is the consequence. Right. And it just makes sense because I see it lived out in my life every day. It makes man's sense. Yes. Man's way of doing things, yes. which is opposing God's way of doing things. Man is anger and it's vi revengeful and so mm. forth. And God is love and he's forgiving. Yes. And mercy endures forever. Right. And they're not the same. No. And I had these two things going on. Conflict, <laughs> yes. Because that is. You talk about conflict. Yeah. I really had a war going on. Yes. 
So there was just wrong teaching, and so many people have heard this very same teaching. Yes, yes. That God was angry and He chased them out. I don't know what degree that it is being taught today, but because I don't visit those churches. <laughs> mm, yes. But let me tell you, I I went a long life under the Believing misconception. The yes. Yeah, stinking thinking. <laughs> yes. And when you believe wrong, you will act wrong. Your actions will be wrong without even knowing <laughs> I it. With, I did with that yes. question. I acted yeah. wrong. Is it? Because that's the way you were taught. And there's a very, very powerful verse in Proverbs. Proverbs 14, verse 12, I believe it is. It says, there is a way that seems right yes. to a man, but <clears throat> its end is the way of death. Wow. You, you're doing something. You honestly believe this is right. right. This is correct. But it ends up in death because what you thought was right is actually so wrong and you are deceived. All right. I can give you a shining example on that and it, regarding some friends of mine. And, but it was about healing. But that would get us off track. So, um, and, and, and he died as a result of it. Mm. And I just wept when I was telling him because I could see he was not understanding. And yes. But now we can take, if we go to uh, Psalms 18, verse 30, I think it is. Let's quickly go there. Psalms 18, verse 30, speaking about the Word. Uh, the Word of God is tested and it's proven. And the Word will not fail. The Word Amen. works. Psalm 1830, it says, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. Yes. If you want something that will stand, if you want something that will work, here it is. It's the word of God. It cannot fail. It will not fail. It is fail proof. So the word of God is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Amen. So there's a way that people are taught, especially now, and this is another whole uh, it would be a very good teaching to speak about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. The kingdom of God versus the Babylonian system or the kingdom of darkness. Yes. And yes. the difference between the two. Right. And, as to, and that is something we are going to have to do because that's involving where we are today. And it's a shiny example. It will help you to understand what's going on with our government and, and the world system today. Yes, yes. So we need to do this. Yes. Put it on your calendar now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And this is once again, we can start with when that voice comes mm -hmm. from the evil one. Jesus says, my sheep will not follow that voice. But so many people hear that voice and now we think, yeah, you know, maybe this word is too old. Oh. Maybe, maybe this is not, you know, uh, oh. we live in the year 2013. This, this, this was written. I, heard, I had someone to tell me, you know, this is the old stuff. Yes. What do you mean old stuff? That yes. new stuff you're coming along is absolutely wacky. Yes. Absolutely will yeah. not work. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it when I yes. <laughs> And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that God doesn't start something before he's finished it. Oh, yeah. Which means that he knows everything before it's even happened. <clears throat> Therefore, this word we cannot say is old and it was for people who lived in, in the age without cell phones. They lived in the age where, you know, people didn't have affections for same-sex marriages. They didn't live in... And all of these things now become so relevant these days. And maybe we just need to change with the times. Mm -hmm. Mm. There is a way that seems right to man, mm -hmm. but it ends in the ways of death. And we are seeing a lot of death around us today uh, in, yes. in, in the world, not just in America, everywhere. Not just physical death, but that as well. Yes. But death in marriages, mm -hmm. divorces, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. death in finances, mm -hmm. death in relationships, and death in peace. How many Absolutely. people... Peace. Have to go to the doctor because they are full of stress. Yes. They got to go and get a, a tablet or a pill or some kind of medication <laughs> that can help them sleep. Calm them How down. many yes. of them, yes, need Praise something to the calm Lord. them down? Yes. Thank so you. if that is one of you, this is the answer. This word is proven, this word is tested, and it stands. I'm just thinking of the people who can't sleep at night 
the word says in Psalm 127 that Jesus, God will give his beloved sleep at night. Give his the word in Proverbs, sleep. Say, Proverbs says that when you lay down, your sleep shall be sweet. Yes, amen. Without medicine, without medication, just by the love and the power and the grace of God. Amen. So let us renew our minds to this because this works and it won't fail. It won't fail if we'll just trust it and stay with it. Yes, most definitely. So anyone... Um, there are just thoughts that are racing through my mind that I want us to talk about and, and be able to, to uh, follow up on. And, and, of course, I can't. We can't. We're running the camera oh. down now. <laughs> we'll have to do it on another program. We'll do that. Can you just uh, say a blessing over them that what we have said will be sealed in their minds, if you will? Sure. Okay. Father, we thank you that your word says that your word will not return to you void. So we speak your word now back to you, back to the people listening, Father. And everyone hearing this word today, we thank you that your precious Holy Spirit will quicken this, make this alive, that it is the truth, that it does work, that it is tested yes, and it yes, will stand yes, everything God. that comes against it. We thank you, Lord, that we will take this word and what we heard and it shall be life to us. We bless the people that heard. We bless the message. And we bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, I just feel as if we have covered something that is so important. And I, I sense a relief from this. And I know that's uh, it's of the Spirit of the Lord. And we just encourage all of you... Um, you have been listening to us and we want you to follow on it. And like I said, Rifle and I are going to be discussing many different factors uh, that will go along with what we've already said. And um, I just want you to listen in, okay? We appreciate you and, and love you for what you have done. And uh, we're looking forward to being with you next week now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.